to devote for every capital accident, for every breakdown, for every bankruptcy that's out there, we need to print money and fix it. This is the Western solution after we've given up our industry. Remember the low-cost solution of the 80s and 90s? Ship your industry to Bangladesh and Taiwan and Singapore and whatever? Yeah, well, this is the consequence called systemic breakdown and bankruptcy. We're bankrupt. We bankrupted the West following the Rockefeller plan. We bankrupted the West by outsourcing our industry. And Britain has a unique problem. I have, I have a, quite a few British clients. And, and, you know, it's kind of funny. I do a per capita check to see what country, what state, what province in Canada is, is my leading uh, entity, leading location for clients. It's Australia. But I've got quite a few from England. Now, they speak English, too, a different, different kind of English, and we're separated by a common language, which is always a funny thing to say. But one client in Britain sent me a message with about 50, 5 zero, 50 examples of gutted British industries where intellectual property and factories were sent to Eastern Europe and Central Europe, mostly Eastern Europe, with EU Commission grants. For example, uh, Raleigh Bicycles. They had a grant, I think, to go to Czechoslovakia. I might not have this all right. I, I don't have it in front of my face. But there are lots and lots of examples of EU grants given to companies to send their intellectual property and their factories to a country like Poland or Czechoslovakia or Romania or Austria and build up that area of Europe at the expense of Britain. Well, gosh, wasn't the EU wonderful for Britain? They had removed 50 different companies and their factories and capital equipment and intellectual property. So patents were ravaged by the Brussels EU Commission and dispatched mostly to Eastern Europe. This was a travesty, an absolute travesty. Uh, so that's, that's what's going on with, uh, with all that. Jim, why did uh, Ben Bernanke go to Japan last month and meet with uh, the Japanese Prime Minister Abe? I think to begin a, a wider QE program uh, because Japan's on the, on the verge of collapse. And I think the Federal Reserve and their criminal organization, banker elite, realize that the fuse to light the contagion banker bombs are located either in Germany slash Italy or in Japan. Now, remember, this is a very important event in September of 2014. I remember it vividly, Rick. The U.S. announced that they were confiscating $1.2 trillion worth of Japanese government pension funds. And I immediately thought, well, gosh, they bought another year for the dollar. That'll cover another year of, of U.S. government deficits or more. And immediately the Japanese central bank announced they were going to QE on infinite volume. And I thought, this is a travesty, but it was applauded. The Western world plus Japan, as it's adopted slave state, vassal state, call it whatever you want, the Western world has no concept of money or capital anymore. And they disregard all the risk of inflation. Inflation, inflation wrecks capital. And that's what we're seeing ever since QE got put on. But Bernanke, I think, went to Japan because they realized they had to stop the, the uh, the breakdown momentum in Japan and, and not permit it to cause a Western banking system contagion event, which I think is inevitable, unstoppable, and coming and in progress, that I call the systemic Lehman event. Because after Lehman Brothers happened, and I don't want to get into all the details of that, but after the Lehman event, 
All the big banks of the West, that, that means Western Europe, it, uh, England, and the United States, mainly Wall Street, they lashed themselves together and said, no one bank will take an undue load on the derivatives. We're going to all share it. So suddenly Morgan Stanley is no longer carrying the full load for treasury bonds and the interest rate swap derivatives. It got spread over a lot of different different banks. Okay, that means that if any one big bank goes, it might take down several, if not the entire Western banking system. So that's the problem. If one big bank goes, for instance, Deutsche Bank in Germany, for instance, uh, Monte de, de Pachi in Italy, if the biggest German or the biggest Italian bank goes, it will kill the entire French bank system. The French banking system has $270 billion of exposure just to Italy. The Italian banking system has reportedly 300 billion euros of non-performing loans. So Italy is going down, Deutsche Bank is going down, and it will all take down the entire French banking system. All right, so something's going on in Japan. Uh, they're having currency gyrations. They're having a rejection of their Japanese government bond that's, that's shocking the, the daylights out of them. And Bernanke went there. You know, the, the, the news clip byline was Bernanke goes to Japan to discuss helicopter money. In other words, dump lots and lots of money, like a like thousand or two thousand dollars on every single household in the country of Japan and every single household in the country of the United States. And every single household in the country of, of Canada. Why not? As Bernanke says, it doesn't cost us anything. In other words, the money that we're dumping has no value. That's the flip side of the arrogant comment that Bernanke makes. We can create money that costs nothing. No, you create money that has no value. But it has a negative value in that it destroys capital. And here's how, just very quickly aside, you print a lot of money, you throw it into the system, you force legitimate, responsible investors to hedge against it. They hedge with hard assets like copper <laughs> mines, like, like energy, uh, like commercial buildings, like scrap plastic and paper. And before you know it, all this hedging against the, the, the willful, destructive, printing of money and distribution of easy money, the result is the cost structure goes up for all businesses. And as costs go up, you see a decline in the profit lines, the profit margins. As you see declines in the profit margins, you see companies shut down segments of their businesses or their entire business. You see giant layoffs at Microsoft, IBM, Cisco and other companies, giant layoffs. We have record-setting uh, layoffs from large corporations from the towns of Gray and Christmas. Those are setting records. Okay, so if you print easy money, you force hedging. The hedging eliminates the profit margin by raising costs, and people get laid off and businesses shut down. And as they shut down, you retire the capital equipment. So it's like a four-step event sequence that starts with printing easy money. And we in the West have no idea what economics is. We have no idea what capital formation is. We have no idea what money is. We have no idea what price inflation is. And we have no idea how to create jobs. So the entire system is collapsing. The only thing that will be left standing will be gold and silver and maybe platinum. 